The Voigtlander Coloscope R 24mm lens for Leica. Should you buy the older f4 lens or the more recent f3.5? In today's video I'm going to use both lenses and the older screw mount lens and tell you which one might be best for you. Join me as I take the 24mm lens along the coastal path in Wales. Hey guys, Matt here from MrLeica.com. So first a huge thanks to my amazing patrons, link below to more content. So following my older video of the 24mm f4 lens, let me just give you a quick refresher of what this lens is capable of. These are sample photos shot on film using various film cameras. And as you can see on film, the 24mm f4 lens is brilliant, no complaints. Now if you use a lens on an APS-C camera, again, you shouldn't have any issues. These photos are portraits shot on the Leica CL with a 24mm f4 lens. The question is, can you get better results from the newer f3.5 lens? So coming up, I'm going to take the f3.5 lens for a walk along the coastal path in Wales, and we can see how the results compare to the f4 lens. I will give you some side-by-side -side photos as I normally do in my review videos. And yeah, let's get into the details. This was on holiday earlier this year with my family. And this was Stanley crabbing. It brought back great childhood memories when we used to do a lot of crabbing as kids. It was then time for me to embark on my 24mm challenge. What photos could I capture with the 24mm f3.5 lens when I'm limited to just the coastal path and whatever scenes I come across? So here you can see some of the first sample photos. Uh, I didn't really know where I was going. I just looked on the map and thought I could probably walk quite a long way across the top of the cliffs. So I tried to head up to higher ground to get better views and hopefully more photo opportunities. Here you can see me shooting at a closer focus distance and you can get some subject background separation even from a 24mm lens. My camera of choice was my trusty Leica M240 but if I owned the black Leica M11 that would be probably my favourite choice of the cameras available because it's even smaller and even lighter. It was then time to head up lots of steps and take a few photos as I went. All of these photos are like M240 raw files and I just added one of my Mr. Leica black and white presets and I tweaked the contrast to try and get a bit more punch from the photos. For anybody new to Leica M cameras, the widest frame line in the viewfinder is 28mm, so you have to frame with either an external viewfinder or just use the live view on the back of the camera. I tend to use the smallest possible setup, so I use live view, but if you want to do kind of, let's say you're shooting with a film camera, you'd use an optical viewfinder, as you just saw there, or you can use an electronic viewfinder which is my Olympus equivalent of the Leica Visoflex, like the original Visoflex for the M240. You just use the same one for a later M camera. Voigtlander optical viewfinders are excellent. They're big and they're bright and really easy to use, but they're not the cheapest. Perhaps look at buying used viewfinders on eBay or buying a viewfinder when you buy the lens at the same time. When looking at the actual photos I was shooting with a 24mm lens, I was trying to find some kind of order amongst the chaos when I found either objects or the leading lines from the coastal path, the easiest thing to, that kind of catches my eye. I did run this path the day before, but that was actually me just speeding up the footage. <laughs> uh, so here you can see me with the cow as a possible subject, but I tried to move myself so the cow was within that lighter bit of sky, and then that gave me a bit of framing around the cow. There's the final photo. There is some lens curvature, but it was a rolling hill at the same time. Here's me getting lunch. I managed to find some blackberries to keep me going because it's quite a long walk and I only had water with me. So I was very glad to find those along the way. Here I thought of another photo opportunity. So I tried first up close to get that subject background separation from the 24mm lens. And then I backed up to see if I could make a composition from the fence. I like the kind of the line going across the path from left to right. There's a low angle. And then there's, there's the high angle, which I prefer, I think, because you can see the path leading away into the distance. A big thanks to Flaghead Photographic, who kindly sent me the 21mm f3.5 lens Type 2 to test, because I own the f4, but I didn't own the 3.5, and many of you had asked me to do a side-by-side -side comparison. Comparison photos are coming up, but first let's take a few more photos with the 21mm f3.5. Here was me again trying to get some strong compositions and I just tweaked the contrast in post to try to get a bit more pop from the, the natural background. If you've seen this channel before, I normally photograph pretty models and so that makes it pretty easy to get nice pictures with almost any lens and any camera. So trying to make some arty photos from something that's outside perhaps of my comfort zone 
it was a bit more challenging to, to get something that caught my eye and I really liked the look of. Here is me focusing, focusing the lens at the minimum focus distance of 0.5 meters. They can see my GoPro, which was kindly doing the video for us for this video. And there's a zoom in. You can get good sharpness, wide open, even at 3.5 on this lens. I saw that used to draw and paint as a child. I think when I don't have models with me, I'm always looking for lines and geometric shapes is the thing which I photograph the most or what my eye catches the most. So as you can see, the, the light path against a darker green grass made for many of my photos and that's just what caught my attention. As a photographer that predominantly shoots black and white, I'm also looking for good contrast in my photographs. So anywhere where I can see some good contrast and line, leading lines and geometric shapes and maybe textures, those things all work really well in black and white. As I was walking along the path, I found this kind of look out hut thing so I thought I'd go in and have a look and also shelter from the wind a bit it was quite cold in the wind. I bet many walkers have been so thankful to find this little cabin especially on a wet day just to shelter from the elements and take a break and maybe have a packed lunch or something. I didn't have a packed lunch so I took some photos and tried to make some sense again from the surroundings I had and hopefully tried to make some arty compositions while I'm seated, let me take my bag off and now's a good opportunity to show you the spec and the differences between the f3.5 and the f4 lens so you know which one might be best for you. So here are the two Voigtlander Colorscope R 20mm lenses side by side. Both like an M out. The one on the right is the older 20mm f4. The one on the left is the newer 20mm f3.5. Both lenses have got the modern focus tabs and we'll talk about the variations in a second. Both lenses have a close focus distance of 0.5 meters and then the main difference is one's f3.5, one's f4. Here you can see the full spec differences side by side. The older lens is smaller and lighter. As you can see there is some vignetting with the 20mm f3.5 but it doesn't have the color fringing issue that you find with the f4 lens. Here you can see real world photos with the f4 and you can see the purple fringing on the right hand side especially whereas on the f3.5 you don't have any color fringing. If we now compare the lenses head to head you'll see what I mean. So on the left the 3.5, on the right the f4, you can see the color fringing on the f4 not on the 3.5. Colors seem pretty similar maybe slightly more saturated on the f3.5 but make up your own mind from the sample photos. In terms of sharpness, both lenses have got good sharpness in the center, but the f3.5 has probably got the slight edge, and then in the corners, the f3.5 is definitely sharper. The main difference is the f3.5 is optimized for digital, where the f4 was optimized for film. If you're looking to buy the f3.5 lens, there are three versions available. The black type 2 is the one that I borrowed, the silver type 2, and the type 1, which is silver and black. Okay, with that, it's time to, for me to have a quick drink and then get on my way before I froze to death. I don't have much body fat, so I get cold quite quick. <laughs> for those of you living in the UK that have now been inspired to buy the F3.5 lens, you can get it from Robert White and use my Mr. Like a discount code. I can put a link to it below and you can get some money off. Here you can see me again taking photos of the coastal path. And I was trying to do the Ansel Adams style kind of light, dark, light, dark, light, dark as much as I can through my scene to make it hopefully more visually appealing. I quite like this style. It, it caught my attention for some reason and I was trying various compositions both horizontally and vertically to try to hopefully try to make something of the photo. I think in hindsight it's not quite as cool as I thought of at the time but it allowed me to waste a few minutes doing my best attempt to try to make some nice photos of the the setting, I think the lines from the, the logs gave me my lines in and then that drawed the eye through to the field in the background. This is a good view that you can see the path going on into the distance and I, I don't know this fence post again caught my attention focused in close at the minimum focus distance of 0.5 meters to try to make some interesting composition. From that point it was time to head back because I had to go and do things with my family so I thought I'd take photos on the way back and see what I could see. Here I was trying to use the fence to frame the, the path again going into the distance and the beauty with the 21mm lenses you can do some really cool composition because you've got so much in your frame 
if you've never shot with a wide lens, I'd highly recommend getting a wide lens just to have a play around with. And uh, yeah, I found it really enjoyable. Okay, the next thing for me to do was to change from the f3.5 to the f4 lens, my older lens, which is the lens that I own, and see what I could do for the rest of the walk. I actually own two copies of the 24mm lens, both screw mount, which is the silver one, and M out, which is the black one, as you've seen. The 21 and 35mm color scope are lenses are the smallest, like M out lenses, available, and the older LTM lenses are not much bigger. Here you can see the 21, the 25, and the 35mm color scope bar lenses all in like a thread mount, which are amazing for film for those who love shooting film, but also digital too. Okay, on with the walk home. So now the photos are being shot with the 21mm f4 lens. This is a lens optimized for film, but if you shoot it in black and white for digital, I have no issues whatsoever. I've owned the original 21mm f4 lenses pretty much the whole time I've shot Leica because I used to use it on a better R3A before getting my first Leica M9 camera and I've never seen any issues. Here you can see there is a vignetting in the corners but you're going to get that with the f3.5 and as long as you shoot in black and white you don't see the purple fringing at the corners. Here's me trying to get a bit RT and going low and shooting at the minimum focus distance. And again, in a second, you'll see me going lowish and minimum focus distance to try to get a bit of depth, even at f4. You'd be surprised, but you can get depth even at f4 with a wide angle 24mm lens. I also have my live view set to black and white, and it helps me pre visualize my shots. I tried this composition first horizontally, and I was trying to get the white chimney against the dark uh, landscape in the background. And then I tried vertically to try to use the stairs as a leading line in. Again, trying to get a separation with the chimney. If you enjoyed this video format, please hit the like button and I can do more. And for more 21mm lens reviews, click these videos next.